Fired Up is presented in audio format wherever you listen to podcasts and in video format on YouTube. Wherever you tune in, please remember to rate and subscribe to the show. Thank you. D. Scott Crook is the Utah employment lawyer. Fired Up focuses on questions that he frequently receives from his professional and executive clients regarding severance, employee stock option agreements, executive employment contracts, and more. A quick disclaimer, Scott is licensed only in Utah and Idaho. As with any discussion about the law, the information on this podcast generally describes the law and is not intended as specific legal advice. As I'm sure you know, laws frequently change and can be different in different jurisdictions. So please consult with a lawyer if you have specific questions about your situation. Welcome back to Fired Up, the podcast where we tackle employment law issues. Scott, welcome back to your own podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to be a guest of my own podcast. I'll bet you are. So today we'll be discussing uh, something I've seen bounced around on LinkedIn. Apparently, the NLRB made a decision that impacts severance agreements. Uh, and what I heard was that because of this decision, you can no longer, employers can no longer put non competition or non disparagement clauses into severance agreements. Is that correct? Uh, the answer is no, that is not correct. And um, there are a number of reasons. All right, let's go over those reasons. Well, first of all, um, the, what was being interpreted was a, a provision in the National Labor Relations Act. And that's an act that was established uh, years ago um, that gives all employees in the United States the right to collectively bargain. I say all employees, but there is a caveat. Um, certain public employee uh, employers are exempted from the act, and so those employees don't have protection. But assuming you're not a, a public employer employee um, and, uh, and you do have the rights, and but I have to be a little bit careful because um, – States can give public employees the right to collectively bargain. So even if they're not protected by the federal act, they may be protected by state acts. But in any event, uh, the National Labor Relations Board was interpreting the National Labor Relations Act and interpreting a certain provision within the act um, as to whether there was an interference with the collective bargaining right of those employees. Okay, so the NLRB is interpreting the NLRA. That's right. Okay, and so how did they, so, yeah, so tell me more about the, the non-competition, non-disparagement component of this. Okay, uh, first of all, there wasn't a non-competition provision. There was actually a non-disclosure and a confidentiality provision that was oh. at issue. Um. And what the case involved was uh, there was a healthcare facility that was affected by the COVID restrictions. And um, as a result of that, they furloughed temporarily employees. Um, when they brought people back, they didn't have enough um, work for 11 employees. And so those employees were permanently furloughed. At the time they were given severance agreements and in those sever in that severance agreement, there were a couple of provisions that are at issue. One was that um, a, a non-disclosure or confidentiality provision, um, which essentially said the employees could not discuss uh, their severance agreements at all um, with anyone, including any third parties. Um, and the other thing was that they could not um, say anything that would disparage the employer, which it would define to include anything that might um, harm the image of the employer. And so in order to get the severance, um, they had to sign those agreements. And that's what was at issue in this particular case. Okay, so 
what so what did the NLRB decide then? Okay, there there are uh, a couple of things to remember and or to know. I guess is a better way to say this because many people don't understand. The NLRA only applies to non-managerial employees. And so the right to collectively bargain only exists with non-management employees. Um, so whatever the decision that the NLRB made, it would not apply to management level employees. So all the universe of severance agreements that apply to management level employees has not been changed at all. Okay. That's an important note first. But um, secondly, the NLRB said in this particular case, those two provisions as written violated the NLRA. And, and th this is the reason why. Under the NLRA, you have the right, an employee is guaranteed the right to collectively bargain. As part of that collective bargaining right, they have to be able to discuss with each other the terms and conditions of their employment. And the statute has been interpreted um, since it was enacted to include, that includes the right to say negative things about your uh, employer. Uh, otherwise, um, no one could go on strike. No one could right. um, ask for uh, better conditions because they couldn't talk badly about their employer. So uh, that's always been the law. And in this particular case, these severance agreements said that these former employees could not speak negatively at all about their employers with any third party or any of, uh, of the employees. And the act has already been interpreted uh, for years to say that you cannot restrict former employees from discussing those things as well. And so they said, as written, as these particular provisions were written, they were written too broadly to restrict the rights of the employer, uh, of the employees. And so they were invalid. So what the case did not say, and what many people are saying is that these provisions are now entirely excluded from the realm of all servants agreements. That is not true. Because first of all, they don't apply to, um, management level employees. I mean, this decision does not apply to management level employees. And second of all, uh, the board said these provisions as written are too broad, which would mean that if you carefully constructed a confidentiality provision or a non-disparagement provision, so as to not interfere with the rights of the employees, those will be perfectly acceptable. Now, okay. the question is, how narrow the, do they need to be to, to meet those criteria? But it does not absolutely ban those types of provisions and severance agreements. Okay. So really, not a lot has changed with this ruling. Because if, if it's written correctly, you can still include these provisions in a severance agreement, but you have to make sure they're not infringing on those certain rights that you mentioned. Right. And I, I have to be careful to say that nothing's changed. It has changed because this is a pretty significant opinion saying, as written, these provisions are illegal. And um, these provisions, I mean, there was no specific uh, ruling in this particular case, uh, in a, a, a previous case that said these types of provisions would be illegal. So it, it, it does broaden um, the law here. So there is a change, but the fact is, it's not what everybody is claiming, um, uh, or I shouldn't say everybody. It's not what a lot of people are saying. It's not a death knell to confidentiality provisions and non-disparagement provisions in severance agreements. It's just not. Okay. So takeaway for, if you had to provide a takeaway, a quick takeaway for employers in Utah. Well, the quick takeaway the is the quick takeaway is everybody should look at their existing severance agreement forms, all employers, and make sure they're not written so broadly that they violate the NLRA's, I mean, the NLRB's new um, restrictions. And and the okay. fact is that 
I'm going to have to modify forms that I use for my employers because they are more broadly written than is permitted. Mm. So um, everybody's going to have to make that um, that adjustment. However, it's my opinion, and it's an opinion shared by many employment lawyers, that a court is likely to overturn this decision. Mm. And so okay. in the future, um, things may change back to what they were before. Um, but, um, but in the meantime, you need to make sure that you're not, you don't have uh, provisions that violate um, the NLRA's um, or the NLRB's direction at the, at the moment. Okay. Well, thank you, Scott. That's very helpful. I learned something. Hopefully all of you listening learned something too about the NLRA and uh, how all of this works together. So thank you, Scott. All right, thank you, James. A quick disclaimer, Scott is licensed only in Utah and Idaho. As with any discussion about the law, the information on this podcast generally describes the law and is not intended as specific legal advice. As I'm sure you know, laws frequently change and can be different in different jurisdictions. So please consult with a lawyer if you have specific questions about your situation. Fired Up is presented in audio format wherever you listen to podcasts and in video format on YouTube. Wherever you tune in, please remember to rate and subscribe to the show. Thank you.